All right, good morning uh, everyone. Um, this is the third week. Um, you know what happened in third week? Well, as you can see, our youth are here. So they are here with us and then um, we've been doing this since I think the past um, three, four months, um, if I'm not mistaken. So every third week I will preach in English, uh, practicing my English. <laughs> Uh, because uh, they are here and then we are uh, praying, we are preparing also uh, for our next generation. Uh, usually they will go to the other room and then but uh, every third week they will be here with us to listen to the words of God uh, with uh, all of us. So, um, if you realize that um, I shared quite uh, often about relationship in a marriage, yeah? A relationship between husband and wife, relationship between parents and children, and uh, in the past two weeks uh, specifically, I shared about commitment in a marriage, the importance of having a deeper and stronger relationship, um, and then how we need to um, serve each other, we need to uh, bless each other, but today I want to share with you about our younger generation. So the title of my sermon today is From Generation to Generation. So I want to speak about um, generations to, and to all of the teenagers in the house, um, those below 20 years old, maybe um, about. Um, I want to speak um, to you today and to all of the adults, to all of the parents, uh, everyone older than 20 years old. <laughs> we are, we got to admit, yeah. Um, I want to ask you to pray let's pray for our um, young generation this is uh, the generation that will serve God um, in the future in the generation that we are you know living today um, we want to pray for our generation so God will uh, use them God will really bless them God will uh, release them God will send them and then uh, they will become a blessing for their generation also so um, I want to start with the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, start from verse 1 until verse 2. So this is uh, the picture of um, Paul and Timothy, the apostle Paul and his um, son, spiritual son, Timothy. So Paul said this, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, Commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Uh, there's the Indonesian version, yeah. I'll read this in Indonesia also. Sebab itu hai anakku, sudah perhatikan ada beberapa yang dikasih huruf uh, tebal ya, yang dicetak tebal di situ. Sebab itu hai anakku, jadilah kuat oleh kasih karunia dalam Kristus Yesus. Apa yang telah engkau dengar daripadaku di depan banyak saksi, percayakanlah itu kepada orang-orang yang dapat dipercayai, yang juga cakap mengajar orang lain. So you can see, Paul said to my son, and then on the bold um, fonts, it says there is my son, and then me, and then faithful man, and then others. So we can see that here in the book of um, 2 Timothy, in his letters, Paul said to Timothy, um, he's talking about generations. Everyone say generation. So Paul is talking about generation. You can see again, there is me, my son, faithful man, and others. Now when I talk about generation, it means two things. The first one, it talks about age. So generation and generation. We have our uh, a generation before us, and then our generation, and then the generation after us. We have our grandpa, grandma, and then uh, our generation, and then we have uh, children, younger generation. Those who are younger um, than us in terms of age. And then generation also talk about maturity. So there are four levels of maturity if you can see in the book of 2 Timothy verse 1 and verse 2. So first, um, it is Paul. Paul is the apostle. And then Paul said to Timothy, my son. So it is his spiritual son. And then after that, Paul said, well, you teach them. Teach the leaders, the faithful men. In different translations, it says... Um, there is a faithful man, faithful leaders, or reliable people, or reliable leaders. And then after that, there is other people, the congregation. 
So there are four levels of maturity from Paul, Timothy, and then all the leaders in the church, those who are faithful, those who are reliable, and then after that, other people, the church, the congregation, to different types of people. Now, in here, Paul actually was charging Timothy to pass on the teaching, to pass on his teaching, and to teach leaders, those who are faithful, those who are faithful uh, in the work of God. And then so, uh, for what? What's the purpose? So the leaders can, and then uh, later, teach other people. So two things. Paul um, asked Timothy, charged Timothy, command, commanded Timothy to teach other people. And then to teach other people, what's the teaching? What's the teaching? The teaching is something that Paul teach Timothy. It is the words of God. So not just um, any other teaching, not teaching about business, not teaching about uh, any other things, but teaching about the words of God. So Timothy, you teach them. Teach them the words of God. Who's Timothy uh, needs to teach? The leaders. So uh, it's specific um, command, specific task. Teach the leaders so later on the leaders can teach other people also. So that's what we call from generation to generation. From Paul to his spiritual son and then to the leaders and then to other people and then later on so people can teach other people and other people can teach other people and so on and so on and so on. Now, Paul, what Paul did was actually preparing for the next generation. Paul was so focused to prepare the next generation. His aim was the next, gen the next generation, the generation after him. That's why he said to Timothy, his spiritual son. Because, you know, Paul realized that one day his time will come. He will be dumb. He will um, um, end and then, well, you know, uh, pass away and die. But sharing the gospel cannot stop just with him at the end of his life. So Paul realized that he needs to prepare the next generation. So he was preparing um, Timothy to teach their generation and the other generation. Now, church, the purpose of our ministry is always to bear fruits. Amen? The purpose of our ministry is always multiplication. How can we experience multiplication is by preparing the next generation. How do we want to see, if we want to see fruits, then we need to prepare the next generation. So this morning, let's focus to our next generation. Let's pray for our next generation. Now, uh, David, in the book of Acts chapter 13, verse 36, David served his generations. This is amazing. So let's read this together. Verse 36, um, 36 the book of Acts chapter 13. The Bible says, Now when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep, and then he was buried with his ancestors, and his body decayed. So, when the Bible says asleep, it's not really asleep, you know. He's passed away. So, sebab Daud melakukan kehendak Allah pada zamannya, pada waktunya, pada generasinya. Kemudian dikatakan, lalu ia mangkat dan dibaringkan di samping nenek moyangnya, dan ia memang diserahkan kepada kebinasaan tubuhnya selesai gitu ya dia uh, meninggal istilahnya. Now church, let's see this. God has a purpose for every one of us. Amen. God has a purpose for you and God has a purpose for me. God has a purpose for every one of us. Next slide. So just like God has a purpose for David, he also has a purpose for every one of us and each one of us. So you are not here by coincidence, God has a purpose in your life. Whoever you are, older, younger, at the present age, God has a purpose in your life. And then, it doesn't stop there. God has also, God has a purpose for every generation. Now, this is talking about generational purpose. There is a personal purpose, and there is a just generational purpose. God has a purpose for each one of us, and God has a purpose for each generation. And each generation has their own challenges, right? Our challenge back then in the 80s, maybe you are some of you in the 70s, 
in the 60s maybe, in the 90s. And right now with the Gen Z, they have their own challenge, different challenge. The challenges that uh, we didn't um, experience back then. So, God has a purpose for every generation. For the generation before us and for the generation after us and then also for our generation. The time where we are living today. And then next, each generation is called to serve their generation. So if you are talking the generation before us and our generation and the generation after us, and then also we are talking um, about uh, maturity, those who are very mature like Paul, and those who are a spiritual son, and then there is leaders, reliable people, and then there are people that's um, the congregation in general. So each generation is called to serve their generation. It is not just to serve our purpose, but there is a specific purpose that God put you in this generation because, because God wants you to serve your generation in, with so many different uh, challenges. And the purpose of our life is to serve God's purpose in our generation. So the purpose of our life is to serve God's purpose in our generation. So when the time has come, that's when we say, um, I have finished the race. I am done. But right now, there is God's purpose for every one of us, for our generation, that God wants us to serve our generation, to serve God's purpose in our generation. So church, David had served God's purpose. And do you know, do you realize that God has a purpose for you? Amen? And then do you know that God wants you to serve Him by serving His purpose in you? So it is not just by, again, by just living, enjoying the blessings of God. The Bible says for David, Acts 13, 36, it says David had served his own generation and then he died. Wow, that's a beautiful thing. I pray that every one of us, when we are finished, we can say, or people can say, well, this person has served his generation, God's purpose in his generation, in his time. Now, he's finishing well. He finished well. So, now I want to uh, bring you to a story. There's a story in the book of 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 42 verse, until verse um, 43. We'll see these two uh, verses uh, right now. Uh, it talks about the cloud of rain. This is an um, interesting story. So let's follow. Yeah? Verse 42. So Ahab went off to eat and drink. So that's uh, the related, uh, connected with the verse before. But Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel, this Mount Carmel, bent down to the ground and put his face between his knees. So Elijah was praying. He prayed to God. And then um, he's, he told his servant, go and look toward the sea. And he went up and looked. And then the servant, his servant says that there is nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, Go back. Okay. So, Elijah, after, um, well, the story before with, the, um, with all the false prophets and everything, so the land was um, experiencing a drought, um, a dry land, no rain after a while. Now, Elijah was praying for rain to come down, to uh, be poured out um, in, on earth. And then uh, Elijah prayed. Elijah prayed, and then he asked his servant, well, um, go up and look toward the sea. Now, I used to, as you know, uh, I like um, hiking. And when you hike, you will reach a point where um, we say uh, above tree line. Above tree line, it means that there is no tree above your head, and then it's only the sky as your roof. So you can see all the sky is open, open air. Uh, then um, you can, um, you know, it's 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 a different different uh, position. Now, let's see this. Um, Elijah specifically asked his servant to go up and look toward the sea. So it means you need to be on the top of the mountain. 
uh, the Mount Carmel. Otherwise, you won't be able to see the sea. If you climb Mount Major, you, can, you will be able to see the um, lake and it's beautiful. If you are under the tree line, then you will not be able to see the sea, of course. That's why Elijah asked his servant to go up so he can see the sea. And then, um, okay, go and look toward the sea. And then um, the servant, his servant went up. Well, it takes a while, you know, it takes a while. Uh, I think uh, just a short example. I think I just use my, um, my own son. <laughs> Jeff, can you help me? Come here with your phone. Can you help me? Can you imagine, just imagine, it takes a while for these things to happen. Now, you climb that and look toward the parking lot. Go. So Elijah keep praying. Keep praying, Lord, send us rain. Yeah, climb. Otherwise, you won't be able to look at the uh, sea, <laughs> the sea of cars. Do you see fishes? <laughs> Is there any truck right there? <laughs> Is there any bicycle? No? Okay, just come back. Okay. Now you will give me the report. Because Elijah was under the tree line. And maybe, I don't know how many minutes, how many hours. So, how's that? Look toward the sea. Is there any sign of rain? No? You sure? Oh, you go again. Oh, no, no, it's okay. <laughs> it will be boring, right? But can you imagine? The Bible says seven times Elijah said, go back. And each time Elijah kept praying and praying and praying. And then, I don't know how many minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour for the servant to go up and then to go down again. And for the second time, well, um, maybe right now, if we ask our son or our spiritual son, go do this. Pastor, nothing. Pastor. And then we kept saying, again, go back. See again. Do it again. Do it. Again. Check the post office, uh, the post box. Is there any letter, for example? No, there is nothing. Now everyone say, there is nothing. So, Elijah said, go back. But the servants kept saying, there is nothing. Go back again the second time, and there is nothing. Go back again the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, the sixth time, the seventh time. Well, there is nothing. But before, if you see the book of uh, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse um, 41, you see the Bible says that Elijah heard the sound of rain. So Elijah heard the sound of rain. But, and then after that, he asked his servant to go up and see if there is any sign of rain. And then the servant said, there is nothing. There is nothing. So we can see that Elijah have faith in God. Well, when even there is nothing, he didn't give up. Well, unfortunately for his servant, he cannot... Um, reject or uh, the request from Elijah because it's his servant. Whatever the master asks, you need to do something. Anytime they ask you to go up, to go down, to kneel, to jump, they, ha they have to follow. So, but there is nothing. So, at this point, have you experienced that there is nothing in your life? You've been praying, you've been praying, you've been praying, and you did something. You give your you give your effort, your best effort. Well, and there is nothing. Well, we've been praying for um, our church to grow, and we did our best. We give our effort. We do the ministry, but it seems like there is nothing. I don't know if it is just me, but I pray to God, Lord, we will have our um, 25th anniversary in the next you know, three years, I think. So, Lord, I want to give you something. I want to give you souls. Souls for Jesus Christ. Amen. But we've been praying. We stay the same in terms of numbers. But I want to pray. Let's keep praying. Let's keep praying. Elijah, he heard the sound of rain. And after the, same, the seven times, and seven times Elijah said, go back. Now, after the seven times, next on verse um, 44 and 
45, the seventh time, the seventh time, the servant reported a cloud small, as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. After the seventh time. So church, seven times, Elijah told his servants to go up seven times. It, um, he kept the faith, keeping the faith while walking in humility. Keep praying, keep asking, put his face, uh, expecting and relying on the mighty power of God, on the promises of God, on the character of God. Remember, God is God uh, of covenant. He made, He create, He keep, He remember, and He will fulfill His covenant. So we need to uh, put, um, we need to rise up in our faith. If even if we don't see the answer to our prayer, keep praying. Amen. Keep believing. Keep praying and keep praying. Believe in the God who will fulfill His covenant and His promises. Believe that God is at work for His promises to be fulfilled in our life. So back to 1 Kings 18, 45 The seven times the servant re reported a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. And then so Elijah said, Go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds and the wind rose. A heavy rain started falling and Ahab rode off to Jezreel. Wow, it's amazing. So after Elijah kept praying, kept praying, kept praying, he finally see the serpent, through the serpent, finally see a cloud as small as a man's hand rising up. And the rain finally came down. Now church, I want to um, remind you again. Let's pray for the promises of God to be fulfilled in our life. In our marriage. In our ministry. In our business. Even seven times. It doesn't mean exact seven. But it talks about, um, you know, um, something that will... Mm, will drain you. If you didn't see a result, it's tiring many times, right? It's just simple. If I can give an example, seven times he will get mad at me. And then for me, uh, go back, go back, see again. I will start to maybe um, questioning God. God, is this really your will for this church? Uh, is this your promises for me? Or Maybe, oh, let's cancel this. Just let's go down. Let's pray. Let's go back home and then let's pray again from home. Maybe I misheard God's voice. Or maybe this is not for me. But seven times and finally the rain came down. Now, I'm sharing about from generation to generation. Um, I'm asking you to pray for our children, for our youth, as uh, we've always prayed also for our little children. Well, um, actually, we want to pray for everyone in the front, but they're the teenager, they don't want to come forward, right? <laughs> but we are praying for our children. And about, um, let me share a testimony. Um, I've been praying for something, for the, um, for the youth, for the young generation, all of us, I believe. If you uh, join our prayer meeting, we pray and we pray and we pray. It's been quite some years we pray, and we pray and we pray. But there is nothing in our ministry. We pray every um, Tuesday for workers, for more worship leaders, for more singers, for more musicians, for more ushers, for more um, teachers, uh, hospitality, uh, media department. We pray for um, in so many different areas for ministry. And as if like it's hard to break the wall. You know. There is nothing. There is nothing. You see the same person again. Well, soon. I can hear the sound of rain. Amen. Do you want to, be, to agree with me? Now, we've been praying for our youth ministry, for our younger generation. And because we don't have our own youth ministry, to be honest, well, I think it's been um, how 
Um, when was the first time you joined the again was the Revelation Resurrection what church is that? Restoration, let's see. Restoration Church in Dover, and then um, I um, spoke with Pastor Z, and then I shared. Uh, well, Pastor Z, Jeff started to go to um, the church to the Restoration Church in Dover. Well, can you feel my heart that I am a pastor, but I don't have a youth ministry in my own church, and I had to send my son, okay, uh, to other people's ministry. And then I said, okay, yeah, there's something good, there's something uh, important. I remember when I was a kid, I uh, joined even a youth ministry in another another church. As long as it is something good, right? There's nothing wrong with that. He's equipped, um, and then he experienced God. Um, if I may share your testimony, one time um, after Jeff came home, he asked uh, mom, uh, mom, uh, one time uh, at the service, I felt like that I want to cry when someone prayed for me. I want to cry, I want to cry, but I'm just trying to hold it, not to cry. Maybe, I don't know, if you've heard someone told you that man cannot cry. No, you? No, it's good. So, man can cry. Every man in the house, you can cry. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So, uh, I want to cry, but I hold it. Well, uh, we just um, told him, well, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. That means, next time, if you want to cry, you just cry in the presence of just follow the flow of the Holy Spirit. Don't hold it. So, um, time goes by, and then um, I think about two, three months ago, uh, out of nowhere, um, he um, said to mom again, mom, I want to lead Bible study. Hmm? <laughs> we never asked him to lead a Bible study, and he said, oh, I want to lead a Bible study. Uh, can, and then, uh, can daddy teach me? Um, well, okay, anytime. <laughs> With my pleasure, of course. Okay, so um, we pray and we pray, we pray, uh, and then long story short, um, last Thursday, um, yep, last Thursday, they had their own care cell, teenage care cell. Wow. Give a kick. Um, clap your hands for God. Amen. This is something that we've been praying, and then I wasn't there. I didn't, they had the care cell uh, through Zoom. And then um, my wife, um, Jane, uh, told me, uh, do you want to be present in the Zoom? Uh, no. Uh, I just let them to have their own Zoom meeting. And then it's, I think it's quite okay, right? You can share, you got something, right? It's, it's amazing. Um, I'm kind of worried. How if, it's just all teenager, how if they talk about something that's not aligned or according to the same uh, with the values or according to the Bible? <laughs> How can they correct themselves? Well, the purpose is for them to learn um, with their language. If I'm there, they will be silent, quiet, right? You don't want to be, to be there. And I promise you, I won't be there. <laughs> and next time, take turn. You will lead also. So, um, why am I sharing this? You know, because this is, the pr this is the result of our prayer. It is not because... I'm not talking about my son or, or whose uh, children. But we've been praying. And this is the cloud as big as a man's hand. Can you see the rain? I put this. I see the rain. Let's say this together. One, two, three. I see the rain. Well, his servant, Elijah's servant, just see the cloud. It's just the cloud as big as a man's hand. But Elijah, before that, he heard the sound of a rain, and it's a big rain. So Elijah had faith in God that one day, rain, one time, the rain will come. And then he acted upon his faith. So let's act upon the promises of God that God has give, have given us. So let's keep praying. And then right now, I want to um, tell you something, that there is a cloud as big as a man's hand. It's happening right now. It's happening in our youth, in our generation, in our younger generation. And you know, one time, I think two years ago, um, at the Relationship Summit, um, City Blessing Church, one, uh, we invited a prophet, and then uh, he prophesied um, on me. And he said, well, one day I see you preaching at schools. 
preaching to lots of students. You know, when you heard that kind of um, prophecy, you know, it's intimidating, right? <laughs> it is intimidating. Maybe when you got the prophecy, oh, God will bless you, God will use you, and this, and this, and this. Oh, we got happy. But you know, prophecy will not um, happen by just uh, sitting down. You, mean, you need to work on it. You need to really uh, pray. Because for me, oh, it's intimidating. Um, just simple question I ask God, will they understand my English? <laughs> with their generation, they have a different, different uh, type of English. You know, with this Sudanese English, will they understand? <laughs> and then, wow, in front of uh, so many people, wow, it's just different challenge, different area, different things. But you know, uh, well, um, this is the result again of our prayer. We've been praying for this. And then I want to ask you to keep praying. Keep praying, keep supporting our uh, generation because they are the generation that will serve the Lord after our time has come, right? We want to prepare them so they can serve God, so they can continue to become God's armor, God's arrow to serve their generation and to bring glory to uh, God's name. So, a cloud of a man's hand. Can you see it? Can you believe it? Can, do you have faith in you that God is doing something? So, let us not give up on God. Keep praying, keep believing, keep on working. Be faithful with the seed that God has entrusted us. And then as you see a small cloud, see it with the eyes of faith. You know, see that harvest is coming. See that the rain is coming. Sir, I mean, well, there is nothing. Your situation will say there is nothing. Your challenges, your problem will say there is nothing. But God said, I will send you rain. Will you, do you able to see with the eyes of faith that I am doing something? Now, let's end this with the book of Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19. Let's read this verse uh, together. This is from Amplified Bible, the classic, classic edition. Let's read this together. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive and know it? And will you not give heed to it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Wow, I can preach just one sermon just from this verse. It's just amazing. So, God said that, Behold, I am doing a new thing. The Bible didn't say just, I am doing something. I'm doing something, but I am doing a new thing. Everyone say new thing. So, this is something new. We had, uh, they had their, their uh, first carousel. It's the first carousel that led by themselves in the history of Rochester City Blessing Church. And this Thursday, they will have the second one. So we schedule it for uh, the same with uh, the adult uh, care cell, second and fourth um, uh, week. Uh, so they will have um, this Thursday another care cell. So the Bible says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Can you see a new thing that God is doing right now in our church, in our ministry? So God is doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. It springs forth. It springs forth like a seed. It springs forth. Do you not perceive and know it? And will you not give heed to it? So I'll read the Indonesian version. It says, Lihat, aku, sendak, aku hendak membuat sesuatu yang baru, yang sekarang sudah tumbuh. Belumkah kamu mengetahuinya? Dalam terjemahannya ini kira-kira dikatakan bahwa, uh, kamu sadar enggak? Kamu bisa lihat enggak? Kamu perhatikan enggak? Bahwa ini nih, aku sedang melakukan sesuatu hal nih, satu hal yang baru. So, Ya, aku hendak membuat jalan di padang gurun dan sungai-sungai di padang belantara. Nah, kalau kita lihat, wah oh, satu hal yang baru kayaknya, aduh gimana mungkin ya. Tapi firman Tuhan janjikan bah bahkan di padang gurun Tuhan akan buka jalan loh. Di padang belantara, sungai-sungai di padang belantara, di dalam kekeringan Tuhan bisa buka, namanya ada air mengalir. So even God say, the Bible promise us, even I will make a way in the wilderness. 
seems like wilderness is something that um, wilderness is you don't know where to go. If you are in the middle in the middle of the desert or in the mountain even, sometimes you got lost and then it's like wilderness, dry land. You don't know where to go. Uh, um, which which path um, do we need to take? Uh, so God will make a way in the wilderness and then rivers in the desert, even in your dry land, in your dry season, in dry season of marriage, dry season of business, dry season of study, of school, dry season of ministry. God can make a river. Amen? Water will flow out. Rain will come down. God can do things that even it is impossible for every one of us. But if it is the words of God, the promises of God, we need to believe in the promises. We need to keep praying and see with the eyes of faith, of our faith, that rain is coming. So God is doing something. It's a present tense. And the question is, Again, do you see it? Do you not perceive and know it? Will you not give heed to it? Church, I want to invite you to be part in the movement of God. When God is doing something, do you want to be just spectators? Just to watch from the outside. Spectators is the group of people uh, in the, uh, when they watch soccer. Oh, just cheer. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, cheer, cheer. That's spectators. Or do you want to be in the field? Let me tell you something. God wants you to be in the field. God wants you to be involved in the movement, in the work of God. Because God is doing something, and through you, God will use you. Don't think that, oh, I'm old. I'm older. Well, we can support our teenager, our youth ministry in many different ways. So, to the parents and to the adults, let's pray for our children. Keep praying. Support them. In a simple way, let's remind them to be faithful and to be committed in church meetings, Sunday service, care cell, for example, even to with a prayer meeting. Remind them to be faithful and to be committed in the ministry that they are joining. Parents, remind them to be faithful and committed in reading and meditating the words of God, in praying to have a closer relationship with God. And what's most important, parents, adults, be an example for your children. Walk with them, show them, help them, and release them. Release them. Give your best effort so they can grow in God. So church, I want to say that God is doing something in our life. Amen. God is doing something in your life, in your marriage again, in your business, in your study, in our church. God is doing something in our ministry. Even if we cannot see the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth times, that there is nothing but that doesn't stop the work of God. You know, God is still working. God is at work. God is doing something. Especially in our youth ministry, God is doing something. God is sending us rain. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your words, oh God. Thank you for your words because we live by your words. We, um, we didn't live just by uh, bread, by physical food, oh God, but, but we live by the words of God. We want to believe in the words of God. We want to believe your, in your promises. We want to believe in the covenant and live in the covenant of God. Father, we pray, we thank you this morning uh, for the youth care cell that just started uh, last Thursday. And we continue to pray for this um, Thursday, oh God, that you will continue to work in uh, each and every one of them, oh God, so they can continue to grow, they can continue to be mature in you. And we pray that we'll continue to put your heart in their heart. Put your heart so they can feel your heart. The reason, the reason why you died on the cross, uh, you gave everything, oh God, for every one of us to be saved. We pray that they will become a generation that will preach the word, will serve their generation. They will bring 
souls to you, O oh God. We pray that they will invite their friends and through their life, you will use them, O oh God. You will use them to become blessing, glory, to bring glory to your name. We pray for multiplication. We pray that leaders will, be, will arise. They will become an individuals with the characters of God. And then uh, you will give them wisdom. You will lead them the Holy Spirit. Lead them as they grow in, uh, through everything, every step they, that they need to take. In their schools, uh, they, will become a, they will have a brilliant mind. They will um, uh, excel in their study. And then so people can see the work of God in their life. Lord, we thank you for your word. We want to see that rain, O God. We want to prepare ourselves to receive your rain. We want to respond to your words, O God. Lord, I pray that you will seal these words. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you.